Hi, my name is Paul Orchard. I live in Yate. I am 49. I was coming home from work and I don't really remember much, but I, I remember waking up on the other side of the road and I was just sat there and I was just looking out thinking, what has just happened? All that was going through my head was I wanted my mother. She was one of the first on the scene. It was around five o'clock. I had a phone call from a girl and she said, your son's had an accident. To be honest, it was the worst thing I ever done. The van's totally obliterated and she's screaming and I've never forgotten that. I mean, to see your child in a smashed up van is the worst thing ever. I can remember going in the ambulance. I was taken to Southmead. I don't really remember stuff until I woke up on Tuesday. After having uh, a nine hour operation, uh, I broke my back twice in the space of four to six inches. On my back I had eight screws and two rods. Um, and my ankle, I had seven, eight screws in my talia spoon. The doctor kept coming in and touching his legs. And he kept saying, can you feel that? He kept saying, yes. Can you feel that? Paul kept saying, yes. Anyway, they'd done this several times. I had feelings in my legs, but I didn't know if I was ever gonna walk again. They said to me, if you can walk two meters with crutches, we'll let you go home. That was the biggest, hardest task of my whole life. I've never done anything as hard as that of walking literally two meters. Took every ounce of energy, everything inside me I give to walk them two meters. And when I'd done that, I, they said, would you want to walk back? and I was so exhausted, I had to get a wheelchair. And they put me in a wheelchair. The, the doctors have said I should be in a wheelchair 100%. And they are totally baffled by me being able to still walk. So, yeah, it was, it was quite um, hard times. The first thing I did when I left the hospital is I couldn't go back to my own flat because obviously I, was, I live in a second floor flat. So I had to go back home with my parents. They've been amazing. If it wasn't for mum and dad, I, my recovery would have been non-existent. It's just the way we've always been. I mean, hopefully, I hope that I'm there for any of my family. If they needed me, I would be there. So it was just sort of something that came automatic to us, really, that we would have him and try and get him back on his feet. I came into the lounge and I stayed there for nine weeks. I had a full body brace. I, had, I couldn't weight bear on my left leg, so it was just it was just a case of just lying there, sleeping. I slept so much and I wasn't tired. I was, I was forcing myself to sleep. I know it sounds silly, but the way I work is if you're sleeping, you're recovering. I had booked a holiday and 
I told the surgeons that I had a holiday in nine weeks and they said, unfortunately, you will have to cancel it. And I said, no. And they were adamant that I was gonna cancel it. And by the end of the week, it was, don't cancel your holiday. So I went on a family holiday and we went to Crete. That's where I started all my rehab. I'd get a lilo and I would do my exercises continuously every day for a week. So not even after three months after your accident, you were back at the gym? I was back in the gym after 10 weeks. done all my own rehab. People were looking at me thinking I was mad. I wasn't mad, I wasn't stupid. I was very, very careful in what I did. I done very lightweight. I started from scratch and each week I'd increase it until I got to the stage where I was fit enough to go back to work after 12 weeks. This has been my life been my life since I was 30 and I wasn't going to change it and it wasn't going to hinder me. So I had a lot of obstacles chucked my way. You have to believe that you can do it because there's certain exercises I can't do. So can't doesn't exist in my head because I can. You can whatever you decide in life to do, you will do. When I was in that gym, that was, that was my home. That was my place of happiness, my social life. So it was just, just happy times during my recovery. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to stop anything. It was always going to be steps forward and no steps back. back working and life was getting back to normal and then I had these experiences with my ankle of I was at home and I'm in a habit now of always elevating my left leg all the time it's something it is that I do and I was led at home with my leg elevated and all of a sudden I had this pain that I can't describe. It was such horrendous pain. It just made me start crying and I didn't know what to do with myself. And this went on for a while and uh, this happened twice. And the second time I'd had enough and I knew something was wrong. So we, we managed to get an appointment to see the take me to hospital. We went in and they've done an x-ray and when they come to examine everything, this bone that they put together with six, seven, eight screws, hadn't had any blood to it or had very little blood and my ankle was slowly dying. a high chance they'd have to cut my leg off. The following Monday I was in hospital and I had an ankle fusion, two massive screws in the side of my ankle to fuse my ankle at 90 degrees and I still get a horrendous amount of pain but it's not the pain that I had then two times, it's pain that I can cope with it's good days and bad days. I contacted Neil Cranwell. We went to London. I sat with him because he had been through the same sort of trauma that I'd been through. So I decided to do a prep for a men's physique. Uh, I sat with Neil and we chatted 
and we come up with a plan and the 10th of December we decided that we were going to give it a go and we were going to do the PCA Southwest. I came first and it, it was just amazing. I couldn't run, I couldn't walk. The feeling of achieving something big and to stand on stage in front of all them people, them looking at me thinking I'm normal and me looking at them thinking you don't know what I've been through and that spurs me on when I look at it and I just like looking out at the crowd thinking yeah and I've worked hard for it and I feel like I've deserved it. I've done the European PCA Championships in Birmingham at the Expo. I didn't place in the top six, but I held my own. I, was, I, I think I came sort of mid-table, which at the end of the day I was really happy. I was exhausted. I just worked so hard, I needed a rest. Then we had COVID. The British finals of two bros opened up, so I entered that, and that's when I come second with Um, Ryan Terry Classic and I came first in that and then two weeks after that I'd done the Ben Reader and I came second in that so then I went from the Ben Reader to British Finals I came second in the British Finals again then I qualified for the Arnold Classic seven weeks I think it was from my last comp for the British Finals and then this was my retirement and I stood in front of 5,000 people in the crowd at the NEC. So I was part of that. It was the first time ever it to come into England. It was the first ever amateur Arnold Classic. Um, on the evening it was the first ever pro show so it was an honour to stand on the stage and to out for a full field, I came fourth and I was over the moon. It was everything I wanted. It was uh, the most amazing send off I could ever have. Looking out to 5,000 people, it was the biggest blow that I could have ever done. So for that, it was worth everything and I will never forget that memory for the rest of my life. My attitude in life now is I don't worry unless I have to worry. Everything is positive. I open my eyes up in the morning and I smile because I've been given another chance in life, another chance to carry on my life. To see my children. It's coming up five years, May the 15th, and it's just made me look at life totally different. A bad day can be turned into a good day. If I've had a really, really bad day, I'll always pick something good up. When I was in hospital, my saying was, believe to achieve and I never give up. So when I got back on my feet, I decided that because I love the gym so much, I would start my own gym brand. I had this logo designed for me. believe to achieve and never give up and people come up to me they ask if I would help them with their training because since my accident I've kept myself in good shape and some of them know my story and they feel inspired and when they're having bad days they come speak to me and and when they leave they're a different person you know a lot different from when they come in so to have that impact on people is something that I'm really pleased that I can do. It's a positive thought that's going through my head when I go to sleep and then when I wake up it's also positive because I'm awake and I've been given another chance in life. Believe to achieve and never give up.
Yeah. A bit. You finish with me. Yeah. With that, <laughs> cut most of it out, eh, Josh? <laughs> I babbled on. I knew I babble on. <laughs>